is basically the spray adhesive. This piece is already done. Just lightly tack it with spray adhesive. The back, nothing yet, just so we can wrap it how we want to get it. This would be my pre-cut piece of carbon here. Obviously the twill has to line up exactly how it does in the car. So it's already cut to where I have to get it. And before you want to put this piece on, you kind of want to take the carbon and push it together to make sure it's really tight, all the leaves are tight and straight with each other. And when you put it on, you want to keep it tight. You don't want to pull it like it's um, like you're trying to wrap something in vinyl. You want to keep everything tight with each other. So just check that real quick. I always take my grain and have it going up towards the right hand corner. When you lay it on, you want to kind of push it towards the middle. Because that way it'll keep the weave tight. So again, when you're pushing it on, you want to push it down towards the center of the piece. Making sure that you keep the weave perfectly straight. Push it down. The tighter it is, the better it's going to look. So that is basically pretty good. I mean, it's pretty perfect. Now I'm going to spray the back with some spray adhesive. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a tape line here on the edge. This is a two inch piece, so I'll take an inch and a half piece of tape and just lay it right in here. Have it go all the way up to the edge. That way I can epoxy up to the edge and uh, don't have to worry about digging carbon out of this, that way this stays exactly true to how it was molded, molded in this instance. Alright, so this one here was just shot with spray adhesive, just something out of a can, stinger spray adhesive. Lightly hit just so I could tack it down so the uh, weave doesn't move or anything when I'm actually using the epoxy. The back of it right now is ready to be shot with adhesive. This here is what it's going to look like after it's tacked down and the tape actually covers all the way up to the line. That way I can epoxy up to the edge and uh, basically have the center all stay true so I don't have any epoxy inside my piece where I have to you know grind it down to get back to the uh, the original form. So that's going to make it the easiest. I'll use a 45 degree grinder and just kind of lightly hit the edge there so I can peel it completely clean off. I'll set those up on brackets. Um, depending on the piece or sometimes if you can't wrap around it, what I'll do is I'll have much more of an overhang of carbon than this. Uh, you know, I'll have it come out to about here and then I'll take this and I'll pinch it on the edge here kind of like that. And then when you're actually, when you have the resin on there or the epoxy or whatever you're using, that will kind of gravity hold it down. That way, if you have like a very pinpoint type of edge, uh, it will use gravity to kind of hold it tight to the piece. But you kind of have to get a feel for the panel of how you're going to do it. Like I said, most of the time the spray ease of method works every single time. Just lightly tack it on here. I've 
I've never had any kind of bleed through or anything like that on the piece. Always paint the piece black um, if you're starting with an original panel or if you're making a panel out of fiberglass like I did here, paint it black. That way, if there is a spot in the weave where it's not fully compressed together, sometimes there'll be a, a small gap to where you'd be able to see through to the piece. So if it's black, obviously you're not going to be able to, to see the imperfection in the twill if the bottom of the piece is black. So I always finish off both sides of black. That way everything, you know, looks to be one solid piece if there is an imperfection. Just kind of take your thumb, wrap it around. For sake of time on the video, I'll just kind of do one little section here so you can see. Take that right up against the line. And that will sit on there like that. Your finished piece should look just like that. Epoxy, one part hardener. Um, pretty simple. Mix it up. Another thing before you actually put the epoxy or your surfboard resin onto the carbon fiber pieces, make sure that everything is dust free, inspect the twill, inspect everything on top of the carbon, make sure that there's no dust, no anything, make sure the twill's fine because you, you have one chance at it, one imperfection in carbon and the piece is absolutely ruined. So this epoxy, it's pretty much blue, bluish, obviously dries clear. A very important step in this process before you put on your resin, and I do this with every batch because it will kill the moisture in the resin and kill a lot of the air bubbles in the epoxy or the resin. Also, sometimes in the winter, depending on humidity levels and temperature levels, um, sometimes it can look a little bit cloudy, and if you hit it with the heat gun real quick, it will turn clear in a split second. right now that's kind of what it looks like you see all the air bubbles in there and when you hit it you see everything just pop away got to get a brush now I've tried this first step a lot of different ways. I've used um, basically the foam roller roller brushes and rolled it on and then used a fiberglass roller for air bubbles. Um, it's a good way to do it. I personally, if I'm wrapping something in carbon where it's going to be a seam piece, it's going to be a finished piece of carbon, I don't like using a fiberglass roller for the mere fact that a lot of times if you go over it re repetitively, you can nick the twill, you can distort the twill, and again, you'll see it amplified under um, the epoxy and the clear coat when it's all done. So the first step, if it's wrapped and it looks good, I normally go very light on the first coat just to get kind of a wet out, just to make sure that it's not, not uh, fully saturated where it's dripping all over the place, but where it just goes through the entire um, coating of the first piece where there's no extra epoxy on the top. All right, so now I'll start with the epoxy treatment. We'll go 
very light on it. If you're using cheap brushes, like most people do, why wouldn't you? Because it's a one-time use. Just make sure if one of the bristles falls off, you're aware of it, because again, one imperfection can absolutely kill a whole piece, and then you'd have to tear it off, start over. After we saturate the piece, we'll hit it with the heat gun again, just to kill any air bubbles or moisture that made its way into the epoxy over time. With carbon, it's all in the prep from what you do. The more time you spend prepping, the better the, the weave and the twill looks, the, the easier the rest of the job is, because you know that's, that's the hardest part. When you do the epoxy, you're literally just putting a, what's essentially a clear protectant over the carbon fiber material. So if it doesn't look perfect when you start, it's not going to look perfect when it's gone. And if there's a small imperfection when you start that you see in the twill, the epoxy and the clear only amplifies it. So it's not like you can really hide anything. It's not like you can really hide anything, you know, if the twill's messed up or sometimes you know, it'll be a little bit distorted, under clear, it'll completely amplify that imperfection. Anytime I do carbon on a project, I'll, let her, I'll, I'll normally let it dry overnight, come back to it in the morning, and it will be perfect for the next coat. I never sand in between the first two coats, um, reason being is you don't want to chance sanding into the carbon. So that's why I do a first coat that is pretty thin where I'll end up taking off a majority of the excess when I'm done here. These are actually pieces for the door panels. I'm going with strips instead of doing the whole thing carbon. And you'll see in the pictures when it's done, it's just with that whole piece, just one piece of carbon, if you know that Camaro door insert, it's literally a huge panel. It looks, it looks awesome, but too much carbon can be a bad thing. I like it more as an accent. And uh, making the top a strip is going to accent the strips and the rest of the dash. So when you're sitting in the car, you, with your peripheral vision, you can literally see the carbon wrap around you in a straight line rather than it going to just a sea of carbon in that door panel. So just get underneath the panel where you tucked it. Now that I have it pretty much saturated, just check it for any loose pieces of the brush. Use the heat gun and go back over it fairly quickly. Once you do this, you actually see the epoxy start to smooth out. You'll see a, some of the air bubbles or air that's trapped into the piece start to burst. This step has to be done if you're handling it.
go back into the epoxy again. So now, this thing has a pot life of probably 30 minutes it'll start to harden. So you kind of have to know how much time you have. Um, I'm probably going to want to go over it one more time pretty softly, hit it again with the heat gun, and then I can pretty much let it sit until the morning. This is where it starts to see, we start to really see the ridges of the carbon, just getting that excess off. By this time it's fully saturated. Also keep in mind that it takes a little bit longer on this process if you're using a thicker carbon fiber. This is 20 ounce. This stuff is very thick. As you can see, just you know, one strand of it, it's a beast. Hit it one more time with the heat gun. So we want to use a light and just visually inspect real quick every part of this. the light you'll see fine air bubbles, if any that are in there. Found a piece of brush. Alright, so this is the morning after. It is cured overnight and uh, everything is very dry to the touch. And I just mixed up another batch of epoxy and did this layer very, very thick to where if you look at it now it's more of a more of a glass finish. So it will end up curing, wetting out, evening out more than you see here to where it's more of a consistent glass type finish and uh, I'll let it dry. I still haven't sanded anything yet. I haven't knocked off the edges on the back. So when it cures this time I'll look at it, kind of evaluate how how thick it is, what the finish looks like, and I might do a third layer and then knock off the back and then simple wet sand and clear and then I'm done. But that's the pieces um, after the second coat, and again the second coat you go pretty heavy on making sure that all the gaps are filled. It lays out smooth, nice, and even. And uh, not sure if I said yesterday, but the benefit with using a two-part epoxy where your main resin epoxy is blue and then you have the hardener we have here. I use resin research, it's just what I've always used. Um, the benefit with using the epoxy is it's three times as strong. I mean, obviously it's more expensive than the polyester resin or surfboard resin. It doesn't shrink, which is a huge plus, because over time all polyester resins do end up shrinking. So as far as warping or anything like that, everything will keep its consistent shape. It's also heat resistant. Um, it can endure more shock, obviously, because it's stronger. 
the pieces won't splinter and crack all over the place. Um, that's why I love the epoxy. It's generally also much more thicker consistency. So it's good, especially if you're using a thick um, carbon fiber, which I generally use. I generally use a 20 ounce. So there's another shot there. And make sure after the second coat that you do use the heat gun and go over it since you put a lot of resin epoxy on to make sure that you get all the air bubbles out of it. But that's basically what it should look like there after the second coat. So it's time for coat number three. I block sanded this piece with 220. I, I did it uh, dry and then I ended up wet sanding it at 220. So realistically, you see a few dips right there. Those are the low spots in the resin, the resin epoxy. So basically I'm gonna do one more coat one more thick coat and at this point that will be my last coat and then I'll block sand it all back down probably starting at 400 wet and uh, then I'll clear coat it so that is this step again the third coat of epoxy make sure you take the heat gun and put it into your epoxy first heat it up get all the air bubbles and moisture out of it so I'll do this coat and then it will be time to let it dry. All right, so this is after coat number three. Um, this is, you want it to look like your finished coat. Uh, how this dries is going to be how much sanding you have to do. So ensure that this coat is pretty much glass. That's how it should look. Um, again, because you're going to want to wet sand this at about 400 grit starting out. And that way you have uh, obviously less work to do and when you're sanding epoxy always remember that the least amount of sanding that you have to do in epoxy the more clear the final product's going to look so if you really don't sand the epoxy much then it will always look very very clear so that's basically doing it all by hand no vacuum wetting it out method and uh three coats epoxy so when this dries it will dry exactly how you see it here all right so this is after the third coat of epoxy um, everything is dry to the touch fully cured overnight just one last test fit on the panel that I'm actually using it for. Um, I'm going to start with this piece at about, I'd say, probably 400 grit. I would go dry and then I would go 400 wet. And then from there, once it's all even and it looks like dry carbon where it's basically smooth, no dips, no valleys, everything's 100% um, flat. I'll then clear coat it um, to get my final product. But as you can see after the epoxy, that is what the third coat will look like. It's pretty much a glass finish, a few minor imperfections that I just have to wet sand out. And the reason I clear coat it is it preserves the epoxy. It'll make the carbon fiber have more of a dimensional look. It'll look more um, 3D, if you will as you see that's what it looks like now so we'll get these wet sanded again I want to do about 400 grit and at 400 grit wet and then clear it at that point another thing when I sand I use soft sanders these are flexible they come in a bunch of different sizes and patterns um, makes it really easy to block sand anything they can get wet they can form to the piece uh, it's it's a must-have for for anything fabrication I mean I use these guys all the time for absolutely everything 
Alright, so this is wet sanding it after I uh, block sanded it with the soft sander with 400 grit. Now I take the 400 grit here and then I go over the piece underwater just to get a smooth consistency finish and just inspect all the carbon and just make sure everything looks appropriate. So when you see it under the, uh, the water, that's basically how it should look. Under the clear, it should look absolutely perfect, no flaws. This is where you have to make sure the epoxy is clear of any kind of contaminated or white spots or air bubbles and just, like I said, make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. All right, so right now we've wet sanded the carbon fiber piece to 400 to where it looks pretty much like dry carbon. There's no dips or valleys. Uh, you can see the consistent shape of the clear and uh, it looks good, free of any imperfections. And like I said, at this point it is time for clear. This is a clear I use, it's a spot, spot clear. Um, it's good for, you know, high build type of application, which I normally do four or five shots of clear onto the panel here. So this guy is ready for clear. I sand it to 400 and not, not smoother than that for the mere fact that I want the clear to really stick to my panel. If you go any higher grit than 400, a lot of times when you start spraying the clear on, it'll start to fish eye. Um, I found that 400 is pretty much the the perfect grit sandpaper to sand it to. Normally if you're shooting clear anything over 300 will you know hide any sand marks. So at this point it is time to clear. So everything is finally clear coated. It is dry. It is now time to wet sand everything. I'm going to start at around 1000 with the block using my soft sander and I'm going to go all the way up to 2000 and then it'll be time to finally buff everything using uh, my 3M compound. So again that's everything there, just need to block sand it with 1000. So in a wet sand here I'm going to use 1000 grit on my soft sander and uh, basically do it to where when I sand the whole panel and then I dry off the entire panel, there are no light marks. You know, everything has to look dull and have a matte finish. That way I know everything is the same, same consistency. If there's any high spots or low spots, the low spots will be shiny still in the clear coat. So the next step here is we are going to buff our panel. And after it's wet sanded, it should have a complete matte finish. There should be no low spots, and the low spots are always indicated by still a glossy part of the clear which your sandpaper never hit. So we're going to start buffing. I like to use the 3M compound because it's a pretty heavy grit but it's also a good mixture of a finishing grit so it'll take out most scratches anywhere from 1000 to about 1200 grit and then I'll always finish that off with a finishing wax with a softer pad. I use the 3M stuff with a heavier harder pad so it cuts more into my piece. So I'm going to start with a 3M. Rub it on there first. Wipe off the compound residue, then now it should start looking like a finished product.
So that is pretty much how it looks there. After the first part is done. Alright, so now I'll use the finishing wax on my panel. I use a softer foam pad here. Spread it out on my panel. There's your finished panel, fully gloss, all your sand marks are gone as long as you wet sand it correctly. This is our finished carbon piece fully installed in the car using the factory insert here before I did all this huge piece in carbon fiber. It didn't really complement the line that goes from there all the way into here. It went into a big sea of carbon fiber, so I decided to change things up, incorporate some suede in the door. There's no suede here before. So we have our suede, which matches the Alcantara on the dash there. We have the carbon here, which it's a two-inch strip that goes all the way around the dash, all the way around to the side. Got some carbon in the steering wheel. So that's the whole design that we have here going on.